In this session, I'll be describing response, statistics, and representations. Objectives of, uh, from this session are how to differentiate continuous from attribute responses, talk about time series plot, sampling from a population, descriptive sample statistics, how to identify simple graphic presentations, identify the normal distribution and turbine probability plots. Let's, we want to describe how we can differentiate continuous from attribute responses. Continuous or variables data can assume a range of numerical values on a continuous scale as opposed to data that can assume only discrete values. So in other words, we might have values that are 3.005 or 2.001, as opposed to a situation where we say that a uh, transaction is satisfactory or it's not. Now for continuous responses, we can have different distributions. They could be normal distribution or log normal distribution. <laughs> Attribute or discrete data, as I said before, represents the presence or ab absence of some characteristics that makes a situation good or bad. We often represent this as a binomial distribution. You can only take a pass-fail or an on-time or not on-time type situation. For example, one out of a thousand transaction is defective. As I mentioned, this is often modeled as a binomial distribution. Now, a time series plot can be used to uh, analyze or give a graphical representation of how a continuous response can change over time. So the x-axis is time and the y-axis is a major variable. We generally want to have 20 to 25 points at least to establish patterns or baselines. So examples of time series plots are the S&P 500 daily closing, shows in figure 8.1. We've also can have what is shown in 8.2, where we're looking at dimension part or time to fill an order. A company's gross revenue is shown as an example in figure 8.3. Now, we often cannot examine the full population, so we then would take a sample from the population. Now, it's important to understand that when we take samples, it needs to be a, a population that's of interest. Sometimes we'll take 200 parts, they're all manufactured in one day. Well, that doesn't represent the date of a variability you might have in a particular process. If we go in and analyze the data using descriptive statistics in Minitab, we can create a sh uh, chart that would look like this, where we can get the overall average value of the sample that we have, and we consider that to be a best estimate for the population. However, that's got a confidence interval associated with it. So I, I get into the equations for actually making these calculations in section 8.10 of volume 3. The histogram and dot plots provide a picture of what can be expected, where it's showing not only the average value, but also the variation of a, a situation of, from which we are sampling. A histogram uh, groups data, to, data points together, where dot plot actually points the actual values. Dot plots are more beneficial, especially if you have a small amount of data, where histogram can be better if you have a large amount of data. Our Pareto chart provides a picture of sources for non-conformances. So figure 812 is an example of presentation of that. A normal distribution for a continuous response has a bound shape. That's where it's got a center to it. That's the mean value. And the spread is represented by standard deviation. For a normal distribution, the properties are that we have about 99.73 of those produced within plus or minus three standard deviations of mean. That's illustrated in figure 8.15 of volume three. 
probability plot is a very ben beneficial methodology to go in and describe what's happening within a population. So I, in section 8.819, I go in and the trend talk about how a normal probability plot, probability density function can be transformed to a cumulative distribution form and then a probability plot. <clears throat> This shows an example of a probability plot. The, the a discussion of the probability plot is on this link here where it gets in a little bit more details about the, the particular graphic itself. So in summer, we talked about continue, the difference between continuous and attribute responses, characteristics of time series plot, sampling from a population, types of sampling statistics, and identification of simple graphic representations and presentation of normal distribution and probability plots.